If you do not understand what the other person is saying, then you will not know how to respond. Chapter 1 of 25 Cent Dinners for Families of Six. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Colleen McMahon. 25 Cent Dinners for Families of Six by Juliet Corson. Chapter 1 Marketing. The most perfect meats are taken from well-fed, full-grown animals that have not been overworked, underfed, or hard-driven. The flesh is firm, tender, and well-flavored, and abounds in nutritious elements. On the other hand, the flesh of hard-worked or ill-fed creatures is tough, hard, and tasteless. All animal flesh is composed of albumin, fibrin, and gelatin in the proportion of about one-fifth of its weight. The balance of its substance is made up of the juice, which consists of water, and those soluble in them such an injolts and phosphates, which are absolutely necessary for the maintenance of health. It is this juice which is extracted from beef in the process of making beef tea, and it is the lack of it in salted meats that makes them such an injurious diet when eaten for any length of time to the exclusion of other food. The flesh of young animals is less nutritious and less easily masticated than that of full-grown animals on account of its looser texture. Beef, which has firmer and larger fibers than mutton, is harder to digest on that account, but it contains an excess of strengthening elements that is not approached by any meat save that of the leg of pork. The tongues of various animals, the fibers of which are small and tender, are nutritious and digestible. The heart is nutritious because it is composed of solid flesh, but the density of its fiber interferes with its digestibility. The other internal organs are very nutritious and very useful as food, in which it is not on that account, and because they are cheap. The blood of animals abounds in nutritive elements. The possibility of its use as a general food has closely engaged the attention of European scientists, notably of the members of the University of Copenhagen who recommend its use in the following forms, in which it is not only suitable for food, but also capable of preservation for an indefinite time. First, as sausages, puddings, and cakes, being mixed with fat, meal, sugar, salt, and a few spices, to serve as a much cheaper substitute for meat, and intended especially for the use of the poor classes. And second, as blood chocolate, more especially suitable to be used in hospitals, as well as otherwise in medical practice in which latter form it has been recommended by Professor Panum at a meeting of physicians at Copenhagen and is now being employed in some of the hospitals of that city. Bones consist largely of animal matter and earthy substance in building up the frame of the body. In order to obtain all their goodness, we must crush them well before putting them into soups or stews. Beef. The flesh of the best quality of beef is of a bright red color intersected with closely laid veins of yellowish fat. The kidney fat or suet is abundant, and there is a thick layer upon the back. The second quality has rather whitish fat, laid moderately thick upon the back, and about the kidneys. The flesh is close-grained, having but few streaks of fat running through it, and is of a pale red color and covered with a rough yellowish skin. Poor beef is dark red, gristly, and tough to the touch, with a scanty layer of soft, oily fat. Buy meat as cheap as you can, but be sure it is fresh. Slow and long cooking will make tough meat tender, but tainted meat is only fit to throw away. Never use it. You would, by doing so, invite disease to enter the home, doer will answer, should rain. The best way to detect taint in any kind of meat is to run a sharp, thin-bladed knife close to the bone, and then smell it to see if the odor is sweet. Wipe the knife after you use it. A small, sharp wooden skewer will answer, but it must be scraped every time it is used, or the meat juice remaining on it will become tainted, and it will be unfit for future use. If, when you are doubtful about a piece of meat, the butcher refuses to let you apply this test carefully enough to avoid injuring the meat, you will be safe in thinking he is afraid of the result. Mutton Prime mutton is bright red, with plenty of hard white fat. The flesh of the second quality is dark red and close-grained, with very few threads of fat running through it. 
The fat is rather soft and is laid thin on the back and kidneys, closely adhering to them. The poorest healthy quality has very pale flesh and thin white fat, and the genus kind has done. Diseased mutton has decidedly yellow fat and very soft flesh of loose texture. Tainted mutton smells bad. Test it as you would beef. Lamb. A carcass of lamb should weigh about 25 pounds before it is old enough to be wholesome and nourishing food. Before it has reached that age, it is watery and deficient in the elements of strength. At any age, it is more suitable food for women and children than for healthy men. The finest kind has delicate, rosy meat and white, almost transparent fat. The flesh of the second quality is soft and rather red compared with the pinkish-white meat of choice kinds. The fat is more scanty and the general appearance coarser. The poorest lamb has yellow fat and lean, flabby red meat, which keeps but a short time. Test the freshness of lamb by touching the kidney fat. If it is soft and moist, the meat is on the verge of spoiling. A bad smell indicates apparent fat. Painted. It is utterly unfit for use. Veal. Prime veal is light flesh color and has abundance of hard, white, semi-transparent fat. The flesh of the second quality is red, in contrast to the pinkish-white color of the prime sort, and the fat is whiter, coarser grained, and less abundant. The poorest kind has decidedly red flesh and very little kidney fat. The neck is the first part that taints and it can be easily tested. The loin is just spoiling when the kidney fat begins to grow soft and clammy. Read this sentence about Bob Veal carefully and be sure to remember it. It is the flesh of calves killed when two or three weeks old, or that of deaconed calves which are killed almost as soon as they are born for the value of their skins. This practice cannot be too harshly condemned as a criminal waste of food. For a stock raiser or farmer who knows his business can feed his calf the best without seriously interfering with his supply of milk. The flesh of Bob Veal is a soft, flabby, sticky substance of a ropey, gelatinous nature, and being the first flesh, unchanged by the health-giving action of air and food, it is devoid of the elements necessary to transform it into wholesome food. It should never be eaten. Pork. The best kind of pork is fresh and pinkish in color, and the fat is firm and white. The second quality has rather hard, red flesh and yellowish fat. The poorest kind has dark, coarse-grained meat, soft fat, and discolored kidneys. The flesh of stale pork is moist and clammy, and its smell betrays its condition. Measly pork has little kernels in the fat and is unhealthy and dangerous food. After testing, as you would beef, so as to see if it is fresh, and making sure that it is not measly, we have still to dread the presence of trichinets to each pound, parasite present in the flesh of some hogs. The surest preventative of danger from this cause is thorough cooking, which destroys any germs that may exist in the meat. Cook your pork until it is crisp and brown, by a good steady fire or in boiling water at least 20 minutes to each pound. Pork eaten in cold weather or moderately in summer, alternately with other meats, is a palatable and nutritious food. It has a hard fiber and needs to be thoroughly chewed in order to be perfectly digested. For that reason, it should be sparingly used by the young and very old. The least fat is found in the leg, which contains an excess of flesh-forming elements and resembles lean beef in composition. The most fat is in the face and the belly. When cured as bacon, it readily takes on the antiseptic action of salt and smoke and becomes a valuable adjunct to vegetable food, as well as a pleasant relish, and in this shape it is one of the most important articles in general weak digestive organs. Poultry. Both poultry and game are less nutritious than meat, but they are more digestible and consequently are better food than meat for persons of weak digestive organs and sedentary habits. They are both excellent for persons who think or write much. Fresh poultry may be known by its full, bright eyes, pliable feet, and soft, moist skin. The best is plump, fat, and nearly white, and the grain of the flesh is fine. The feet and neck of a young fowl are large in proportion to its size, and the tip of the breastbone is soft and easily bent between the fingers. A young cock has soft, loose spurs and a long, full, bright red comb. Old fowls have long, thin necks and feet, and the flesh on the legs and back has a purplish shade. 
Chickens and fowls are always in season. Turkeys are good when white and plump, have full breasts and smooth legs, generally black, with soft, loose spurs. Turkeys have long hair, plumper, but of inferior flavor. Full-grown turkeys are the best for boiling, as they do not tear in dressing. Old turkeys have long hairs, and the flesh is purplish where it shows under the skin on the legs and back. About March, they deteriorate in quality. Young ducks and geese are plump, with light, semi-transparent fat, soft breastbone, tender flesh, leg joints which will break by the weight of the bird, fresh-colored and brittle beaks, and windpipes that break when pressed between the thumb and forefinger. They are best in fall and winter. Young pigeons have light red flesh upon the breast and full fresh-colored legs. When the legs are thin and the breast is very dark, the birds are old. Game Birds Fine game birds are always heavy for their size. The flesh of the breast is firm and plump, and the skin clear, and if a few feathers are plucked from the inside of the leg and around the vent, the flesh of fresh tender breasts is colored. If it is dark and discolored, the game has been hung a long time. The wings of good ducks, geese, pheasants, and woodcock are tender to the touch. The tips of the long wing feathers of partridges are pointed in young birds and round in old ones. Quail, snipe, and small birds should have full tender breasts. Fish. Fish is richer in flesh-forming elements than game, poultry, lamb, or veal, but it contains less fat and gelatin. It is easily digested and makes strong, muscular flesh, but does not greatly increase the quantity of fat in the body. The red-blooded and oily kinds, such as salmon, sturgeon, eels, and herring, are much more nutritious than the white-blooded varieties, such as cod, haddock, and flounders. The salting of rich, oily fish like herring, mackerel, salmon, and sturgeon does not deprive it of its nutritive elements to the extent that is noticeable with cod. Salt is entirely devoid of nutriment, while the first-named oily varieties are valuable adjuncts to a vegetable diet. Although fish contains more water and less solid nutriment than meat, it is generally useful from its abundance and cheapness, and certain kinds, which are called red-blooded, are nearly as nourishing as meat. Oily fish satisfies hunger as completely as meat. Herring, especially, makes the people who eat it largely strong and sinewy. Sea fish are more nourishing than freshwater varieties. Sea fish and those which live in both salt and fresh water, such as salmon, shad, and smelts, are the finest flavored. The muddy taste of some freshwater species can be overcome by soaking them in cold water and salt for two hours or more before cooking. All kinds are best just before spawning, the flesh becoming poor and watery after that period. Fresh fish have firm flesh, rigid fins, bright, clear eyes, and ruddy tips should be chosen bills. Oysters, clams, scallops, and mussels should be eaten very fresh, as they soon lose their flavor after being removed from the shell. Lobsters and crabs should be chosen by their brightness of color, lively movement, and great weight in proportion to their size. You ought always to buy them alive and put them head first into a large pot of boiling water containing a handful of salt. They will cook in about 20 minutes. Vegetables. In order to be healthy, we must eat some fresh vegetables. They are cheap and nourishing, especially onions and cabbages. Peas, beans, and lentils, all of which are among the lowest priced of foods, are invaluable in the diet of a laboring man. He can get so much nourishment out of them that he hardly needs meat, and if they are cooked in the water that has been used for boiling meat, they make the healthiest kind of a meal. All juicy vegetables should be very fresh and crisp, and if a little wilted, can be restored. Potatoes now cost and laid in a cool, dark place. All roots and tubers should be pared and laid in cold water an hour or more before using. Green vegetables are best just before they flower and roots and tubers are prime from their ripening until they begin to sprout. When it is possible, buy your vegetables by the quantity, from the farmers or market gardeners or at the market. You will save more than half. Potatoes now cost at Washington Market from one to one dollar and a half a barrel. There are three bushels in a barrel and 32 quarts in a bushel. Now at the groceries, you pay 15 cents a half a pack, or four cents a quart. That makes your barrel of potatoes cost you $3.63 if you buy half a peck at a time, or $3.84 if you buy by the quart. 
So you see, if you could buy a barrel at once, you could save more than half of your money. It is worthwhile to try and save enough to do it. Fruit Fresh fruit in Europe labor especially for children, as it keeps the blood pure and the bowels regular. Next to grains and seeds, it contains the greatest amount of nutriment to a given quantity. Apples are more wholesome than any other fruit, and plentiful and cheap two-thirds of the time. They nourish, cool, and strengthen the body. In Europe, laborers depend largely upon them for nourishment, and if they have plenty, they can do well without meat. They miss apples much more than potatoes, for they are much more substantial food. All fruit should be bought ripe and sound. It is poor economy to buy imperfect or decayed kinds, as they are neither satisfactory nor healthy eating, while the mature, full-flavored sorts are invaluable as food. Preserved and dried fruits are luxuries, to be indulged in only at festivals or holidays. Nuts are full of nutritious oil, but are generally hard to digest. They do not come under the head of the necessaries of life. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to Learn with Cartoon Channel. Publish a video to your friends.